aerospace entrepreneur and a girl born in Rome, Roma. And I love words and their etymology. One word I really love is exploration, the act of searching for the purpose of discovery. The age of exploration was one of the greatest time of our humankind. It was the early 15th centuries, and it was defined by very few special human beings. Then the adventurers, another Latin word, adventurus, about to happen. Nowadays, we call these crazy dreamers entrepreneurs. Two Latin words, entre, to swim out, and prendes, understand. Swim out to understand. So my favorite entrepreneur is an interesting Italian man that was born in 1451, Cristoforo Colombo, in my Italian accent. Inspired by his brother, Bartolomeo, he traveled the sea when he was very, very young. And he ends up in a city, Porto Santo, where he started studying the water, the currents, the winds. And he came out with these incredible ideas. I can reach the Indies navigating west. He was an entrepreneur, and entrepreneurs need money. And Colombo was not very lucky. He got a lot of no's from kings and queens in Spain, in Portugal. Stuff work. At that time, most of the population really knew the Earth wasn't flat. But one thing is know it. One thing is asking money to demonstrate it. And everyone was very afraid of what it was called Mare Oceano, Sea Ocean. They thought there were monsters and incredible physical phenomena, storms, disasters, behind Gibilterra, Gibrot, the columns of Hercules. So the poor Colombo was poor, without food, very depressed. And he ended up in a monastery, Santa Maria della Rabida. And he met Juan Perez, very lucky. Juan Perez was the confessor of Queen Isabella. And they convinced her to give money. And here we go. It was the 3rd of August, 1492. And Colombo set sail for his first adventure. The rest is history. Something that really keeps me awake and not more than our two years old, <laughs> she's amazing, that how, how does it work? It's like, can you have a dreamer, a dream, money, and change the world? Is it so easy? In fact, it's not. What happened in 1492 was an amazing time in the history of our humankind. One particular thing. Cutting-edge technologies, I call them hybrid technologies, helped Colombo to change the world. So Colombo used two technologies that were absolutely cutting-edge at that time. The compass, magnetic compass, and very great advancement in ship technologies. So before the compass, if you had a boat, you were really to navigate close to the shore, and you had to see the celestial body in the sky. With the compass, Finally, boats can go away to the shore when there were pirates and rocks. And they could also see the sky if it was overcast or very foggy. And then what Colombo did, he went away in this crazy trip with three boats, a carac, Santa Maria, and two beautiful caravels, Niña and Pinta. The caravel, high tech at that time, a little boat, that was used for shipping vessel. He had a very, very small distance underwater, so he could do a very interesting fast maneuvers. He had what is called a Latin triangular sail, Latin, facile, easy. So he could zigzag, was a technique called beating to windward. Amazing technologies. 36 days, thanks to the tech, and they went. So La Nina, his favorite boat, had 20 people on board. Just three beds, the other was sleeping everywhere. $10 a month per sailor in current money. That was not a lot of money. 
and every board had a wooden pump, and one pump couldn't compensate for all the water that was coming inside the boat in 24 hours. It was very filthy. The boat storage was messy. It was not a holiday. But that crew changed the world. Something that they couldn't even imagine happened when those crews got a new word. Think about one thing. I'm Italian, hey, so stay with me on this one. New food. Imagine the new food that was introduced. It's like, oh, we got the chili peppers. They changed India forever with the curry. And tomato, right? Tomato. The first recipe in Italy that contained imported tomato was 1692, after Colombo. And I'm sorry, but I can't imagine life without pizza. Forget about it, okay? <laughs> so chapeau to Colombo. But it was an old flower, wasn't it? I mean, there were terrible consequences. There were death. There was slavery. There was disease. The exploiters that followed the explorers didn't do so good, didn't they? Exploiters, I love this word. So are somebody that took advantage of people and things for their own gain. So let's summarize here for a second. We got a dreamer, we got a dream, got money, and we got cutting edge technologies. And finally, exploration took place, and we could swim out. So now let's zoom in at today. Hmm? 2017. We are very, very lucky, and most probably none of you is aware of this. We are in another very, very special time in the history of humankind. There are no kings and queens to pay for exploration anymore. No financial institutions, no government, but there are billionaires. Lucky them. Billionaires, they became billionaires from the software entrepreneurship revolution, didn't they? And then there are the new Colombos with ideas and goals. And again, what there is now is additional technologies coming back online. I'm a nerd, so let me help you with that. Nowadays, you can 3D print a satellite, a rocket engine, its injection filters, combustion chambers, its fuel, everything. 50% of reduction of mass to build a rocket. Nowadays, you can use light alloy, fiberglasses, composite, a lot of buzzwords, a lot of new materials. Phone technologies are used with semiconductor and electronics to build satellites as big as a shoebox, nanosatellites. And we are launching them to cover every side of the planet, to connect everything. And then we'll build rockets to launch them in space every month, like an Uber, the Uber of space. <laughs> and then we got these big rockets they're going to bring us to Mars. It's the new dawn of exploration, and it's happening right now. And like those, you know, very, very, very afraid and fearful people that thought that there was monsters in Atlantic oceans, we, a lot, we do have a lot of naysayers nowadays. But I'm a positive technology person. You know what they say? They say, why space? We have so many problems on Earth. But space has been helping Earth for a long time. So we live in a planet, beautiful Mother Earth, that is going to be home on 9.6 billion, billion people by 2050. We have to increase 70% our food, decrease water wastage, increase efficiency. Nanosatellites today, and this is my day job when I'm not a TED, they are out there to prepare what is called the Internet of Things revolution. They connect everything. Food, mangoes, cows, trees. They track everything to measure and prove efficiency. You know, a lot of people say, hey, it's really, really, really dangerous to travel to Mars. We should not do it. Very risky. I, I don't, I mean, I agree. You got a rocket there and you're traveling for six months. But hey, listen, stay with me for a second. This is going to be a first-class cabin with food, with a gym to exercise, with a cinema, 
You can call your friends and family. Shall we talk a bit about the niña? The niña was hard work. I would <laughs> surely prefer to go six months to Mars. Surely. A lot of people say, why Mars? There's nothing there. And I agree, Mars is quite a complicated planet. It's dry, super cold. 90%, actually 96, of the atmosphere is CO2. So not breathable, can't breathe. Hmm? But <laughs> I'm afraid we need to do that. So there are three things we need, eh? air, water, and food as beings to survive. But listen up, let's, let's zoom in for a second, OK? 60% of Mars underwater, under, underground, there is water and ice. There are engineers in the world that have built two machines. One to get oxygen out of CO2. One to get water out of the atmosphere. The atmosphere of Mars is very humid. And then, of course, we need food. We will need to bring food. Most probably it's going to be in the dry form, so not really pizza. <laughs> but there are engineered microorganisms that we can bring with us to create crops on Mars. We will need to feed the colonists on top of those 9.6 billion people. And Mars is not the only option we got. So there is a space telescope out there called Kepler. And Kepler saw in our galaxy billions billions of planets that are similar to us. So let's be very, very realistic. It's happening. It's happening. We are going to go there. And this is not going to be simply discovery. It's going to be colonization. From the word cholera, that means to inhabit. And the real question is, <laughs> Are we really sure? I mean, we know the explorer is going to do it. Let's just face it, they're going to do it. They're really good. But what about the exploiters? Did we learn anything about what happened in the past? What's going to happen? Are we going to do this new colonization in a civil way, in a decorous way, in a proper way? Are we ready for this? You know, <laughs> What is interesting is that we don't know what technologies are going to do. Technologies can do good, and they can do bad. People are talking about terraforming Mars. Do you know what it means? Changing Mars' atmosphere to be similar to our planet. We don't know what's going to be the next tomato we're going to find. We don't know what is going to change our life. But there's one thing I know. Our kids and my two beautiful daughters, they are two and four right now, they might choose to live on Mars during their lifetime. There's going to be earthlings, there's going to be Martians, they're going to have different bodies and different dreams. If you want to call your Martian lover and say good night, I love you, you have to change one time zone every day. Are we ready for that? Realistically, I don't know if you are, but you need to be well aware that let's enjoy this because that's the most amazing time you've ever experienced in humankind, and you are here to witness this. So let's just really enjoy and write it. There is a, a poet, modern poet, that I really adore, and I want to quote him tonight to say goodbye to you. And he says, rise up, hands and hearts, and dare to reach his human and the stars are there. Thank you.